Ladies and gentlemen, the people of Petaling Jaya, very good evening to all of you. First of all, I would like to sincerely thank each and every one of you for supporting us tonight and attending this dinner tonight. Your presence tonight, your support tonight, means a lot to us. Because after the fall of the PH government in Putrajaya, after the Lanka Sheraton, and a series of defeat from Sabah to Malacca to Sarawak to Johor, a lot of people say that the DAP is going to face an uphill battle in the coming general election. We may be down, but tonight's your presence and your support shows us that we are not out. We will come back stronger and we will bring down Barisan National once again in the coming general election. I think that spirit is very important. You give us the confidence. You give us the spirit that we have millions of ordinary Malaysians behind us, supporting our struggles, supporting good governance, supporting better tomorrow. Of course, in the past two months, the DAP has made some transition. We have conducted our National Congress under our party constitution to select a new group of leaders in the Central Executive Committee. And under the party constitution, the Secretary General post, which is the highest post in the party, cannot be held by the same person after three terms. Therefore, Sadra Guanying has finished his responsibility as the Secretary General of the DAP after more than three terms as the SecGen. And with the support of the delegates and my fellow colleagues in the CEC, I was given the honour to be the Secretary General of the party. I thank all our colleagues, comrades and members for their support. But after the National Congress, especially in the past few weeks, a lot of people ask what happened to the DAP. Why people like Tony Poa was not elected into the Central Committee? Why people like Yo Bi Yin was not elected? And then you have Ong Kian Ming announcing that he is not going to contest in the next general election. A lot of people said, is DAP conducting a campaign to push all the English educated leaders, to push all the smart people, all the Oxbridge graduates in the DAP? Firstly, I said no. No such thing. The DAP is a party for all. No matter what background you are, no matter what kind of education that you receive, we appreciate and we welcome everyone. And as far as I'm concerned, as the party leader, I appreciate every single talent in the DAP. People like Tony Poa, Yo Bi Yin, Ong Kian Ming, they are top talents in the DAP that I will continue to appreciate. And after Ong Kian Ming made his announcement, many friends from the media circle are anticipating that Tony will make his announcement tonight because there is a fundraising dinner tonight. I can assure you there is no announcement tonight by Tony Poa. But I have an announcement on Tony Poa. Many weeks ago, I have discussed with him because he's no longer in the CEC right now. But I've discussed with him and he agreed that he will serve as the policy advisor to the DAP Secretary General. And I waited until tonight in front of the residents of Damansara and Petaling Jaya to make this announcement that Tony Poa 
is still and continue to be a DAP leader. And he will continue to play a role in the leadership of the DAP. I know Tony wanted to retire very early. He wanted, he wanted to enjoy life. By, but I told him, I will not give him an easy time. He will continue to have a lot of work to do. But as usual, that position does not come with any pay. It's free of charge and free service to the party. And I'm sure he is more willing to do that. So Tony will continue to play a role. We will not sideline any particular leader. Your being will continue to play a role. She is one of our top talent in the party. One of the brightest minister during the PH cabinet. Imagine your being one person can handle five portfolios. Five or six, huh? I can't remember too many portfolios in the ministry. Whenever Mahade in the cabinet asked her to present paper, Mahade always said, Ada menteri yang banyak tugas punya. Menteri yang banyak portfolio. She alone handle four to five portfolios. After the fall of the PH government, your being task and her ministry was broken into three. It means that they need three men to do what your being did during the PH government. Shame on them! Right? It means that our ministers were capable. We can do our work better. Just now, your being said that when I was the Minister of Transport, I can do a much better job than Vika Siong. I think that goes without saying. Uh, right? I think any one of us can do better than Vika Siong. I can put up any DAP leader can do much better than Vika Siong. What did Vika Siong know? When the air ticket prices went up, he asked people, buy a leader. Next year, Chinese New Year, buy now so that it can get cheaper. Hey, that kind of statement don't need a minister to tell you, right? Any frequent flyer, frequent flyer from Asia can tell you that. You buy early, you get discount. You can get a cheaper price. So you don't need a minister to tell you that. When there is problem with micro-mobility, he ban it. That is not the way to become a minister. That is not the way to govern the country. And during our time, whenever there is an opinion poll or survey, any top five ministers during the 22 months, without fail, four out of the five top performing ministers were always from the DAP. If you conduct top 10, all DAP ministers were in the top 10. It shows what? It shows that the DAP, we put in our heart and soul in our work. We were serious. We gave our best to perform, to make sure that we bring changes to the people. Any ministries that helped by the DAP, we brought new policies, we brought new initiatives to benefit the people. Like Gobin Singh, within short 22 months, even though be before he became the Minister of Communication and Multimedia, I'm sure Gobin does not know or did not know anything about multimedia. He didn't know much about IT or internet because he, he's a lawyer with legal background. But within a short 22 months, Gobin managed to double the speed, half the price of internet. That is an achievement by itself. That was brought to you by a DAP minister. When I was a minister of transport, we managed to implement a monthly pass just with 100 ringgit, benefited more than 150,000 commuters in Klang Valley using public transport on a daily basis with just 100 ringgit a month. And that initiative, of course, was continued by the current government. So it shows that 
when we are in government, we can do better. We can deliver better. During the 32 months, we gave our best. But sometimes in politics, giving our best was not enough. We were too naive. We spent our time in the ministry. We spent our efforts to think about how to bring better services to the public. We spent very little time on politics. That's why we were too naive. We were brought down by people who were plotting every day to bring us down. I told this story to many people. During the week leading up to Sheraton Move, all the ministers who were not part of Sheraton Move were busy with their work. Your being was back to her constituency, looking at the polluted river. Masabu was away for a conference. Lim Guan Ying was very busy planning for the stimulus package in anticipation of the threat of COVID. I was away in Sweden to attend an international conference. And when Sheraton move happened, I was in London transiting back home. The joke that I always told people that when I left Heathrow Airport, I was still a minister. I was given the special privilege, special lane as a diplomat, as a minister to board the plane. When I left London, I was still a minister. The moment I landed in KRA, I lost my job. Because in the middle of the flight, Mahade re resigned and the entire cabinet has to resign. But even though that we lost the government, one thing we are very proud of the DAP is that we were not blinded by power. None of the DAP ministers, deputy ministers or members of parliament follow the traitors in Raka Sheraton. None of us betray the people. Every single DAP MP continue to believe in our struggle and we did not join them. If we wanted to join them, I could still be minister today. I could still bargain. I could still negotiate that if you want me to join, give me back the Ministry of Transport. We, Ka Siong, can forget about it. They only had two MCA, MCA MPs. If your being wanted, she can still stay as a minister. Same goes to Gobin. But during the entire Sheraton move, leading up to the fall of the government, and when, before we went to the palace to make our choice of our new prime minister, we stood our ground. We stood to our principle that we promise to the people of Malaysia that you elect the Pakatan Harapan government. PM number seven was Tun Dr. Mahade. PM number eight was Anwar Ibrahim. We stood by that promise and we supported Anwar Ibrahim to be the Prime Minister. Even though we failed, we did not succeed. We lost the government. But we did not lose our principle. Our principle remains. Our promise to the people remains. And that is the difference between the DAP and other political parties. And that is the reason why our supporters can have faith in the DAP. And you should continue to support us. And we will continue our struggle for a better Malaysia. This struggle is not going to finish. It's not going to be over. We have two options now. First option, give it up. Forget about it. Some people have said, these people, this country cannot change especially the non-Malays. We are minority, we cannot change. Daman Sara, you can win 100,000 majority, only one seat. We cannot change the government because we are minority. There is one school of thought, there's one opinion. The first option is that we give it up, forget about it. 
Never mind lah, let Barisan National rule. Let Amno make a comeback. Even if they are corrupted, never mind. We can still do business. We can still cari makan. A little bit of corruption, we can bear with it. Some people have that kind of thought. But we do not subscribe to that notion. We always believe that we are the citizen of this country. The future of this country must be decided by all of us together. And the second option is that we do not give up. We continue our fight. We continue our struggle. Together with our brothers and sisters in Parti Amana, in Keadilan, all the right-minded people in our political spectrum, continue the struggle, continue to fight, give hope to Malaysians, and we will make a comeback in the next general election. That is the second option that the DAP must pursue. And we hope all of you can support us, can stand with us, because we believe this struggle is worth fighting for. This is our country. This is our nation. We have no other places to go. When we say that we demand higher standard of governance, we should not compare ourselves with Barisan National. The bar is too low. If people like Tajuddin Ramli can become an ambassador to Indonesia, anybody can become a minister in this country under their rule. But our bar should be higher. The people must demand a higher governance, higher standard of politicians. We must benchmark ourselves with the best, with our neighbours. In terms of the standard of ministers, we should benchmark with the Singaporean ministers. What is so di different between us and Singapore? Why they can do better? Why can't we? What is so special about Singaporeans? It's not that their DNA is different. Many of the Singapore ministers are former Malaysians, by the way. So that we must benchmark with the best. If Singapore can do, why can't we? But the public, the voters, must have this demand for better governance from politicians. And we must not give up politics. So one thing, one message which is very important and we hope everyone can spread this message is that never, never give up your vote or your right to vote. A lot of people say that no point coming out to vote. After we vote for you, the MP jump. The MP hop to another party. That's why we have this MOU. We send Gobin Singh to participate in the select committee. And the work has been done for the past one and a half months. And we are going to table to parliament an anti-hopping law, amend the federal constitution, ban hopping. Anybody who were elected under a party banner, once they leave the party and join another political party, then a by-election must be held in that constituency. The voters have the right to decide whether that person can continue to be a member of parliament. That is something most fundamental that we are trying to achieve. And we are going to achieve it very soon. We hope that this gives back the confidence to the public that your word will not be wasted. Your word will not be taken for granted by the MPs. So we hope, do not give up your hope. We hope every one of you be the agent of change, bringing back the spirit in 2018, every one of us here can play a role. Convince your neighbours, convince your relatives that come next general election, we must come out to vote. The reason why we were defeated in Johor and Malacca is because there are a lot of voters who refused to come out to vote. And that gave almost a walkover to Barisan National. We cannot let that happen in Selangor. We can't let that happen in the next general election. So my appeal to all of you is that supporting us 
do this kind of fundraising dinner. We are very appreciative. We, we thank you for that, but that is not enough. Another important role that every one of us must play is to convince everyone besides us to participate in the next general election, come out to vote, vote for Pakatan Harapan, bring back our mandate of the people and install Pakatan Harapan as the next federal government and we will definitely do better for Malaysians. So ladies and gentlemen, we hope tonight's dinner is a new beginning. It has been two years. We can't have this kind of dinners. We can't have this kind of gatherings. We can't see 1,000 people sitting together for a common cause, for a common message. We can't see that. But right now, we can do that again. And we will continue to do that, to bring this message not only throughout Selangor, but throughout the country, let every Malaysian once again rise again. Bring down Barisan National. Thank you very much. Before I forgot, I'd like to announce the total donation for tonight. And this is again an indication of your support. We have collected 19,700 from the floor donation just now. Thank you very much. To top up to 20,000, I make a personal donation of 300 ringgit to make it up to 20,000. Thank you very much.